Let's now look at implementing the comment resource API. If you remember, a comment is not the root resource. It follows the message. So it's messages slash message ID slash comments. So if you want to look up comment ID 20 under message ID 2, it would be messages slash 2 slash comments slash 20. There are a couple of ways you can implement a resource like this. And I'm going to use this opportunity to showcase a really cool way to write resources, which is called sub resources. This is not something that I've, that I've seen used very often, but it's a really cool way to build resources, especially when you have nested resources like this. And I'll tell you why. And um, it's a good thing to know. So let's look at the resource first. We have uh, the message resource. And as we already know, this resource maps to slash messages. So for any comment URI, since it starts with slash messages, what we could do is add all the comment APIs in the message resource, right? So since it's slash messages slash ID slash comments, uh, it starts with slash messages. So since this class handles anything starting with slash messages, I could do that over here, right? So I could do something like a get for this path slash message ID slash comments. So the whole URL would be slash messages slash message ID slash comments. And uh, let me add a, a test method that I usually use all the time. So it just returns the hard coded string test, right? So if I were to do a get request to messages slash some random message slash comments, it should get me test and this works fine. This ID can be anything since we are not, we are totally ignoring the ID. It could be anything and it just calls the same method. So, well, that's one way to get this working. We can have all the comment APIs over here, but it's not really ideal because look at the name of this class. This is message resource. You don't want to have comment uh, APIs over here, right? Now imagine we have likes and shares as well. So all the comment APIs, all the like APIs, and all the share APIs are going to be in the message resource, which is not really nice. So we want to create a new resource called comment resource and have the comment APIs in that. We want to create a new resource called like resource and have the like APIs there and so on. And then instead of having all these methods over here with slash message ID slash comments slash whatever, there could be a bunch of methods, right? So instead of that, if you could somehow tell JaxRS to say whenever the path is slash message ID slash comments, whenever it starts with that, don't execute an actual method over here. Instead, hand over the responsibility to this other resource that would be ideal, right? You see here, I've created a comment resource, which is currently blank because it's in the resource package. Well, turns out we can do just that. And that's the concept of a sub resource. So a way the sub resource concept works is you still have the root resource, but then you say after some point in the URL, you want to delegate the responsibility to this other resource, right? So you need to somehow add a hook from the main resource to that other resource. How would you do this? Well, the way to do this is instead of, uh, you need to have a method here and you need to have the path annotation to the method, but instead of having the method return some value, which is sent back as a response, what you want to return is an instance of the resource that you want to delegate to, right? So in this case, let's remove the get here. We want this to happen for all methods, not just for get right? Because it could be a post or a delete or whatever. So when this path matches, then return comment resource, not a string, comment resource. And uh, I'm just going to call it, again, the name really doesn't matter. So what I want to return here is a new instance of the resource that should actually do the work, right? So I'm going to say new comment resource. Okay, so I'm creating a new instance of this resource. Now what's going to happen is no matter what HTTP method is accessed over here, you notice here I've removed the HTTP method annotation. So no matter what the HTTP method is, when this path matches, what Jersey is going to do is what Jaxer is, is going to do is it's going to execute this method and it's going to see, okay, the return type is actually another resource. 
So it's gonna look for the actual method in this new resource, right? So with, this is really cool. Now we can actually add all these different APIs in this resource. So let's try that out. So I'm gonna add a path over here because this is a resource, but the path here doesn't have any value, right? I'm gonna just do a slash because I want the path to be inferred from here. So I'm gonna create a method here uh, for get, and uh, I'm gonna say public string. I'm just gonna create the same test method. Okay, but in this case, I'm calling the sub resource over here. Now, let's, let me change this to a new sub resource so that we know what's going on. And I get this new sub resource. So that's what's happening here. Jersey is mapping this to this method and it sees this is a new resource. Now it's gonna take the remainder of the path that it's mapped and send it to this. Now the remainder of the path, well, there is nothing here. So it's the remainder of the path is slash. It's gonna say, okay, this handle slash, which is good. So this is the root for a get because this is a get method. It's gonna say, okay, this is the match and it's gonna execute it, right? So the way Jersey handles the URL is basically adding up the path which mapped over here to get the comment resource plus the path to the resource plus the path to the methods, right? It's very similar to this. So here the way Jersey maps resource URIs is gets the path at the class annotation and adds to it the, the path at the method level annotation. So in the case of a sub resource, what happens is the class level path for the root resource plus the method level path for the sub resource plus the class level path for the sub resource plus the method level path for the sub resource. So it adds them all up. Uh, I, I don't know if it's confusing, but I hope I hope this uh, this flow makes sense. Uh, I'm just going to add one more over here so that this is clear. So I'm going to do a let me let me do this. I'm going to do comment slash comment ID. Right now there is nothing, but let's map to that. Right. I'm going to do a get to the path, and what's the path gonna be? It's gonna be messages slash message ID slash comments slash comment ID. So this is in the message resource, messages slash message ID slash comments, right? So this part is already mapped. Now I just need to map the comment ID. So I'm just gonna add, well this is slash, so this is fine. I'm just gonna add slash comment ID. Okay, now I'm gonna add another method here, public string test to, these are very bad names, please don't do this. I'm just doing this now because I'm lazy to type the actual names. Uh, I'm just gonna return, okay, redeploy and let's test this. So this should work. Now I'm gonna access this URL pattern it should return the new value. And there you go, you got the updated method, right? So this is how the addition of these uh, URLs happen in a sub resource. The other cool thing is, since this is a delegation, you get all the parameters over here, right? So you have two parameters here. One is the message ID, one is the comment ID. The comment ID should be straightforward here. I'm just gonna use at path param, uh, what we want is the comment ID because we are mapping it right here. I'm gonna say long comment ID. And uh, I'm just gonna print that. And it should, let me import this it should get the comment ID proportion from the URL and return it in the response. Let's verify that. And you get that. Now, how about the message ID? Let's say I change this to two, right? Now I wanna get the message ID. How do I do that? Because the message ID is mapped in the parent resource. It's not mapped over here. Well, the good thing is, 
you can actually access the parent resource path parameter as well in the sub resource. So all I need to do is I'm just going to copy this and use yet another path param for message ID. Okay, notice that this message ID is not in this path annotation. It's actually in the parent resource path annotation. But since this is the call which actually led to this method being executed, this param is actually available to this method as well. Okay, so I'm gonna add this. All right, let's see if this works. And there you go, this works. So you have access to the entire URL even though the mapping of certain portions of the URL happened in the parent resource. So this is the concept of the sub resource that I wanted to talk about. It's pretty powerful. This lets us have separate APIs and separate resources so that we don't put all of them in one resource just because the URL starts with slash messages. You can actually delegate different resources. So you can easily imagine a message ID slash likes to just return the like resource, right? It creates a new instance and Jersey is smart enough to say, hey, what I've returned is the new resource. So it's going to look at that resource to see what's the method to execute. Okay. So I'm not going to go over the details of the implementation. What I'm going to do is pause this video and flip to the implemented version where I'm just going to walk through uh, what I've done for the comment resource. And here it is, all done. If only I could code this fast in real life. Well, anyway, there are a few changes I've made. The first thing is I've added a new model called comment, right? It's very similar to message. It just has the standard four fields, the ID, the comment message itself. I know it's called message, but it's basically the content of the comment, uh, the created date of the comment, and who actually wrote the comment, right? In that sense, it's very similar to message. The next change I've made is the message model contains a map of the comment ID and the comment instance, right? Every message has a bunch of comments. So a message instance has a map of a comment ID to the comment instance. Now, what I've also done is I have marked the getter for comments, the get comments getter. I've marked it as XML transient because I don't want the comment data to show up when the message instance is pulled up in the API, right? We don't want the list of all the comments when you access a message. So you want the comment list to be ignored when the message instance is being converted to XML or JSON. And the way to do that is by marking it as XML transient. This marks it as, you know, ignore for XML conversion, but even JSON conversions, uh, you know, honor this. So this should exclude the comment list from both XML and JSON uh, representations. That was an exchange. The change that I did for the service, I created a new comment service, which is basically getting the same list of the map of messages, but I have equivalent methods for CRUD, right? I have get all comments, which takes in a message ID. It gets the message instance, gets the comments for that message instance, converts the values into an, a list and sends it back. There is a get comment, which accepts the message ID and the comment ID, which gets the message and then does, uh, you know, for the comment map, it pulls up the right comment based on the comment ID. Add comment again gets the message based on the message ID and adds the instance of the comment to it. Update comment again gets the message and updates the comment instance. Remove comment gets the message again and then removes the comment instance which has this ID, right? So similar service, it's just that there's one extra step to get the message first and then deal with the comment. All right, so now the final thing is the comment resource which is a sub resource that we already seen. So now what it does is it has uh, these produces and consumes at the very top because it's dealing with JSON, all the methods inside. Uh, it has an instance of the comment service, creates a new instance, and now it maps all the methods like, a, like it typically would for a root resource. What we are doing is we are using this as a sub resource in the message resource, so this part gets added to every URL that you see over here. 
you have get and post for the root resource. You have put for slash comment ID, which is messages slash message ID slash comments slash comment ID over here. I'm able to get the path param for the message ID and the comment ID. I just call the right business services over here, right? So the delete comment calls the remove comment and then the get for a specific comment ID calls the get comment of the comment service. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. I'm going to, you know, share this code so that you can explore this and see what's going on. Should be fairly straightforward. The thing that you need to take away from this tutorial is the concept of a sub resource. And I hope that has made sense using this. All you need to do is return an instance of the resource and map it to the path and the path gets added. Right, <laughs> that's all you need to know for this tutorial. All right, so I hope that made sense, and uh, I'm gonna share this code uh, in the website. So make sure you go to the website URL and check the code out. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.